All right, let's tackle the last question of chapter eight. It is question 190. So let's read the question. Question 190. A uniform magnetic field of one Tesla is pointing into the page. Calculate the net force on the rectangular frame above. So the rectangular frame we are seeing as a left and right side of 0 0.1 meter, as a bottom and top side of 0 0.3 meter. We are told that there's a one Tesla magnetic field pointing into the page. And we have a current of 30 ampere moving counterclockwise here. So again, we're going to use a similar logic that we used in the previous example. I'm gonna give a notation to each of the four force acting on this frame. The left one will be F1, the top one will be F2, the right one will be F3, and the bottom one will be F4. All right, so as always, let's draw a vector diagram and let's identify the direction of each of these force vectors. So if we start with F1, we have, actually, it will be easier on that side, we point toward the current, so it's pointing downward, we curl our finger toward the, um, um, toward the magnetic field, which is into the page, and our thumb is pointing in the direction of the force. So we got F1 over here. We repeat the same logic with uh, F4, so uh, point to the right, curl our finger, so the F4 is pointing up, same thing with F3, so it's pointing to the left. And finally, we got F2, so in this case, it's pointing down. Now recall that the formula for the magnitude of the magnetic force is equal to the current multiply by the length, multiply by the magnetic field, multiply by the angle between the magnetic field and the current. Now note, because the magnetic field is pointing in to the board and the current is on the board, they are always perpendicular, so the angle is always 90 in this case. Now there's an interesting um, um, detail that happened here, is if we look, all the force are subject to the same current and the same magnetic field. And F2 and F4 share the same length. F1 and F3 share the same, um, the same length also. So what we, we, we see right away is F1 and F3 are equal. F2 and F4 are also equal. Well, if we look on the force diagram, what we really see when we, we take the complete vector, not only the magnitude, but its direction also, we see that F, uh, F1 is equal to minus F3, F2 is equal to minus F4. So the net force is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus F4 is equal to zero. So we don't need to do any calculation here because it's obvious that they all cancel out each other. And in fact, uh, if a current carrying wire is in a uniform magnetic field, the net force on the rectangular frame is always, well the frame, not, it does not need to be a rectangular frame, but the frame is always zero. Now note, it's not because the, um, the frame, the net force on the frame is zero that there's no torque. We will see in two chapters from now that it is possible to have a torque on um, uh, a frame and we will also uh, see how we can create electricity from uh, such torque, all right? Um, so we are done with chapter eight. Uh, it is a big chapter. Make sure you study and practice these and obviously there will be some question regarding the mass spectrometer, a velocity selector, these type of question, uh, the current carrying water. Um, so make sure you study these, all right? So see you in the next chapter. We're going to be talking about the source of the magnetic field.